Tom Jones is unquestionably a legendary musical icon, boasting a career that has spanned decades and dazzled audiences worldwide. With his powerful, full-throated baritone, he has captivated the limelight, creating a musical legacy that remains unparalleled. However, just as his successful career has made the headlines, his tragic lows have also made it to the media, causing huge controversies. His life has been a wild roller coaster of events, and in his old age, Tom Jones is far from happy. How has the journey been for Tom Jones so far? In this video, we will discuss the whole truth, Tom Jones's life, and how he is now over 80, but leads a sad life. Enjoy watching. I thought it would be lovely for you, and I was right, but that's what makes it much more difficult for me, because I've got to try and... Um, figure out which way to go with it, you know. Tom Jones's early life. Thomas John Woodward, the incomparable Tom Jones, emerged into this world on the 7th of June, 1940, at the resplendent 57 Kingsland Terrace in Treforest. Born to the loving embrace of Frida Jones and Thomas Woodward, his early years were steeped in warmth and familial devotion, setting the stage for a remarkable life. Hailing from an illustrious English heritage and infused with the rich tapestry of Welsh culture from his mother, Tom's roots formed a tapestry of cultural richness. His father, a hard-working and diligent coal miner, served as an indomitable pillar in shaping Tom's character and upbringing. Tom's educational journey unfolded at prestigious institutions, beginning at Wood Road Infant School, progressing through Wood Road Junior School, and culminating at the esteemed Pontypridd Central Secondary Modern School. Despite his parents' efforts to provide a top-tier education, Tom's interests diverged from the conventional pursuits of formal schooling or sports, a deviation that would set the stage for his extraordinary destiny. Remarkably, even in his formative years, Tom's vocal prowess captured the attention of those around him. His melodic performances graced family gatherings, weddings, and resonated through the halls of his school choir, leaving an indelible mark on the hearts of all who witnessed his early artistic brilliance. Yet adversity struck at the tender age of 12 when Tom was confronted with the harrowing diagnosis of tuberculosis, an affliction particularly daunting for a child. This chapter of his life, marked by resilience and courage, forced him into a two-year hiatus confined to the confines of bed rest for intensive treatment. During this trying period, where darkness threatened to overshadow his spirit, Tom Jones found solace in the diverse sounds of music that surrounded him. Left with little else but his medications and the confines of his bed, he delved into the vast realms of musical expression, forging an unbreakable bond with the art form that would later define his destiny. The crucible of these two arduous years would later be recalled by Tom as the most challenging period of his life. However, it was within this crucible that the seeds of his musical journey were sown. As the young virtuoso, restricted physically but liberated creatively, began his ascent into the dazzling world of music. Jones' music's journey. Renowned for his unparalleled vocal prowess, Tom Jones possesses a distinguished and commanding voice, a full-throated, robust baritone that stands as a testament to his musical artistry. From the early days of serving as a tenor, his vocal journey evolved with the passage of time, transforming into the signature sound that defines his illustrious singing career. Tom Jones, in reflecting on the changes in his vocal range, eloquently stated that what he may have lost on the top end, he gained it in the bottom end. Once capable of hitting a top C in his youth, he gracefully adjusted to the evolution of his voice, where a B-flat now took precedence. In 1963, Tom Jones took his inaugural strides into the music realm as a representative for the Welsh beat group Tommy Scott and the Senators, marking the genesis of a career that would leave an indelible mark on the industry. Undeterred by initial setbacks in 1964, where solo recordings yielded no success despite collaborative efforts with producer Joe Meek, 
Fortune finally smiled upon him when DECA producer Peter Sullivan recognized his exceptional talent. Simultaneously, the astute eye of Gordon Mills, who would become his manager, redirected the trajectory of his career, eclipsing his previous affiliation with then-manager Phil Solomon. Under the diligent guidance of Gordon Mills, Tom Jones seamlessly integrated into the vibrant London music scene, adopting the stage name Tom Jones, a moniker inspired by the acclaimed 1963 film. Securing a coveted contract with Decca, his single It's Not Unusual catapulted to global acclaim in 1965, reigning at the number one spot on UK charts and claiming the 10th position in the US. This meteoric success solidified his status as the preeminent vocalist of the British invasion. Beyond chart-topping singles, Tom Jones's manager orchestrated opportunities for him to lend his distinctive voice to iconic film theme songs, including contributions to Thunderball and What's New Pussycat. Recognizing his exceptional contributions, the Grammy Awards honored Tom Jones with the prestigious Best New Artist accolade in 1966. As the late 1960s witnessed a subtle decline in his popularity, Gordon Mills responded with swift and strategic action, rebranding Tom Jones as a crooner and broadening the scope of his musical repertoire. This transformative move would ultimately reignite and sustain the enduring brilliance of Tom Jones's illustrious career. Jones and Presley Tom Jones seamlessly transitioned into the movie scene, effortlessly showcasing that his talents were not just exceptional, but truly limitless. During this cinematic era, he had the extraordinary opportunity to meet and form a profound connection with his idol, the legendary Elvis Presley, while actively participating in the filming of the cinematic masterpiece, Paradise, Hawaiian Style, in Hollywood, 1965. The encounter between these two titans of entertainment was nothing short of magical, and as fate would have it, a genuine and remarkable friendship blossomed between Tom Jones and Elvis Presley. Their bond transcended the glitz and glamour of Hollywood, reaching depths that only true kindred spirits could fathom. Tragically, the untimely departure of Elvis Presley in 1977, just a year after the devastating loss of his wife, cast a shadow over the entertainment world. Yet, through the storm of grief, Tom Jones remained an unwavering pillar of support for his dear friend. Their closeness endured, becoming a testament to the enduring power of friendship amidst the harsh realities of life. In the aftermath of Presley's passing, rumors began to circulate about Tom Jones's romantic involvement with Priscilla Presley, the former wife of Elvis. Jones, with grace and candor, stepped forward to dispel the speculations, shedding light on their shared history as friends that dated back to the 1960s. Their connection, rooted in a long-standing camaraderie, became a source of solace and mutual support as they navigated the challenging terrain of grief following the loss of the iconic Elvis Presley. The Reawakening Tom Jones's music career experienced a remarkable resurgence, earning him numerous prestigious plaque recognitions as his timeless and undiluted musical gift continued to captivate his ever-growing and unwavering audience with a resounding wow factor. In 1989, the illustrious Tom Jones was honored with his star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame, an accolade that added yet another dazzling layer to his remarkable and enduring legacy. The year 1991 saw a monumental collaboration as he joined forces with the legendary Van Morrison on the album Carrying a Torch, released on Decca Records. Jones's cover of the title track, originally composed by Morrison, showcased his extraordinary interpretation and musical prowess. Recorded at Townhouse Studios in London, where Morrison wrote and produced four songs, the album stood as a testament to Jones's ability to elevate iconic compositions to new heights. Tom Jones's debut at the UK's prestigious Glastonbury Festival in 1992 was a defining moment that solidified his status 
as an international music icon, leaving an indelible mark on the festival's storied history. In 1997, Jones lent his magnetic voice to a cover of Randy Newman's song, You Can Leave Your Hat On, contributing to the soundtrack of the film The Full Monty. His rendition added a new layer of charisma to the iconic song and showcased his ability to infuse classic tunes with a contemporary edge. Venturing into the late 1990s with a flair for collaboration and exploration, Tom Jones released the album Reload in 1999, achieving unparalleled success by reaching number one on the UK charts and selling over four million copies worldwide. This milestone marked another extraordinary chapter in Jones's illustrious career. Notably, the album's standout hit, Sex Bomb, soared to number three on the UK singles chart in early 2000, captivating audiences with its infectious energy. The year 2000 was a defining moment in Tom Jones's career. He received a distinguished invite from the then president of the United States, Bill Clinton, establishing a global appeal, recognizing his efforts and achievements in the music industry. It was an invitation to perform at the 2000 Millennium Celebrations in Washington, D.C., on New Year's Eve, a remarkable way to begin the new year. Following after was a series of honors underscoring his formidable works. He received a Brit Award for Best British Male, giving credence to his status as one of the most illustrious artists in the British music industry. Furthermore, he became the new voice of Australia's National Rugby League. His distinctive voice played on airways advertising the 2000 season. In 2002, the ever-relevant Tom Jones unleashed another musical gem, the album Mr. Jones, produced by the acclaimed Wyclef Jean. The album, along with its first single, Tom Jones International, secured a spot among the top 40 hits in the UK, attesting to Jones's continued relevance and ability to captivate audiences across generations. Recognition continued to pour in as Tom Jones received the Brit Award for Outstanding Contribution to Music in 2003, a testament to his enduring impact on the music world. The following year, in 2004, Tom Jones once again showcased his versatility and timeless appeal by collaborating with the Pussycat Dolls and Carmen Electra at the VH1 Divas concert. Their electrifying cover of Kiss not only underscored Jones's ability to adapt across musical genres, but also emphasized his timeless charm that resonates with audiences spanning multiple generations, leaving them in awe of his enduring brilliance. Jones is knighted. In 2006, beloved singer Tom Jones received the greatest honor in the United Kingdom, a knighthood from Queen Elizabeth II at the majestic, Buckingham Palace. It was a special recognition of his dedication and phenomenal contributions to music. When the glowing news was announced, an elated Sir Tom remarked that while his first popular hit song so long ago felt like just the opening verse of his story, this new title marked the most wondrous and exciting milestone yet. It's the best thing I have had, he declared, with happy pride shimmering in his voice. Receiving the medal-adorned royal tap, Sir Tom felt deep joy and pride for his glistening new title, the pinnacle of his one-of-a-kind, top-charting music career. In July 2007, Tom Jones stood out among prominent artists performing at Wembley Stadium during the concert for Diana. Sharing the stage with guitarist Joe Perry of Aerosmith and soul singer Joss Stone, the performance was unforgettable. They presented renditions of his classic songs and added a unique twist with a cover of the Arctic Monkeys hit, I Bet You Look Good on the Dance Floor. This showcased Jones's versatility and his knack for connecting with a new generation of music enthusiasts. A passionate boxing fan, Tom Jones was frequently invited to perform national anthems at various boxing matches. Notably, he was honored to sing God Save the Queen, before the Floyd Mayweather vs. Ricky Hatton fight in 2007. He also sang the Welsh national anthem Hen Walad Fai Nadau at the highly anticipated Bernard Hopkins vs. Joe Calzage fight in 2008, featuring fellow Welshman Joe Calzage. 
In 2009, he once again sang God Save the Queen before the Manny Pacquiao vs. Ricky Hatton fight, adding a touch of grandeur to these significant sporting events. In 2008, Tom Jones released 24 Hours on S-Curve Records, marking his first album of new material in the United States in over 15 years. Despite approaching his 70th birthday, Jones maintained a rigorous performance schedule with over 200 annual shows. He embarked on a world tour to promote the album, emphasizing his enduring passion and the desire to remain a formidable contender in the music industry. The same year brought further recognition as Tom Jones was inducted into the Hit Parade Hall of Fame, acknowledging his lasting influence and contributions to the music world. He was also invited to perform on BBC's Strictly Come Dancing on November 16, 2008. His captivating performance of If He Should Ever Leave You, the debut single from his 24 Hours album, received praise and was named Spinner's ninth best song of 2008, a testament to his ongoing artistic vitality. 2009, Topping UK Music Charts In February 2009, Tom Jones showcased his enduring passion for live music by participating in an exclusive performance with Vincent Moon. He sang three songs live in front of a camera in a New York hotel room. March 2009 marked another significant milestone in Tom Jones's career when he achieved the top position on the UK music charts for the third time with a cover of Islands in the Stream. This duet with Ruth Jones, Rob Bryden, and Robin Gibb, co-writer of the original song with his brothers Barry and Maurice, was inspired by its feature in the popular BBC sitcom Gavin and Stacey. The release supported comic relief and the song reached number one. This marked his first chart topper since Green Green Grass of Home in 1967, setting a remarkable record of 42 years between two UK number ones. This achievement underscored his enduring popularity and ability to stay relevant in the ever-changing music industry. Tom Jones, the legendary Welsh singer, had experienced both the heights of success and the depths of despair throughout his career. Departure from Pop In 2010, Tom Jones released his album Praise and Blame, marking a departure from his usual pop hits into the soulful realms of gospel and blues. Released on July 26, the album featured haunting covers of songs by iconic artists such as Bob Dylan, John Lee Hooker, and Billy Joe Shaver. Renowned musician Booker T collaborated on the album, adding to its spiritual resonance. However, Praise and Blame faced controversy. On June 7, 2010, the single Burning Hell was released, coinciding with Tom Jones's 70th birthday. A cover of John Lee Hooker's original, the song carried an eerie, melancholic undertone. The album met resistance and skepticism, with Island Records' vice president expressing strong reservations and questioning its spiritual theme. Despite the tumultuous release, Jones had moments of triumph. In July 2010, he delivered a soul-stirring performance of Burning Hell on Friday Night with Jonathan Ross. In August, Praise and Blame defied critics, debuting at number two on the UK album chart, a testament to Jones's timeless talent and enduring connection with fans. By 2010, having sold over 100 million records, Jones continued to touch hearts through his music. He performed at the Help for Heroes charity concert at Twickenham Stadium on September 11, 2010, and later appeared on The Late Show with David Letterman in New York on September 22nd. In May 2011, Jones lent his voice to Hugh Laurie's debut album, Let Them Talk. In May 2012, he released a single produced by Jack White titled Evil, symbolically returning to his roots and expressing a hint of nostalgia and sadness. Music Coach Tom Jones's career took an unexpected turn when he joined the coaching panel for the BBC talent show The Voice UK in 2012. This allowed him to share his extensive experience and mentor young talent. Despite his success on the show, he faced disappointment when he was not renewed for the 2016 season. 
Jones publicly criticized the BBC for their lack of consultation. In November 2015, he teamed up with Rob Brydon for a special 90-minute show for BBC's Children in Need, highlighting his enduring appeal. In December 2015, he appeared on the BBC's Jules annual Hootenanny, where he performed a duet with the legendary Paul Weller, leaving a lasting impression on viewers. The 2010s showcased Tom Jones's resilience, adaptability, and unwavering passion for music. Returning to The Voice in 2017 and embarking on a summer tour in 2018, he proved to be a formidable force in the music industry. In 2020, he graced the BBC's Jules annual Hootenanny again, concluding a decade that witnessed his triumphant return to the stage with memorable duets alongside Jules Holland and Celeste. It served as a poignant reminder of his timeless appeal. Tom Jones Autobiography In 2015, Tom Jones poured his heart into his autobiography, Over the Top and Back. Beyond being a personal narrative, it was a chronicle of British pop and light entertainment from the 60s onward. While honest in its reflection, the book couldn't completely satisfy the reader's yearning for the whole truth. It offered a journey through a life filled with successes, infidelities, and heartbreaks vividly painted with the colors of his experiences. Amidst the twists and turns, Jones discovered inversion therapy to maintain his health, a fitting metaphor for a life marked by both physical and emotional ups and downs. The underlying sadness in his story serves as a backdrop to his musical genius, a genius that has profoundly touched the hearts of countless listeners and continues to resonate through time. The Power of Music Tom Jones unveiled his next project, the album Surrounded by Time. This fourth collection of cover songs promised to be a bittersweet journey into the music of others, infused with Jones's unique essence. Produced meticulously by Ethan Johns, the album was set to reveal a fragile piece of his soul. Alongside the announcement, Jones released a new single, a poignant rendition of Todd Snyder's Talking Reality Television Blues. This sad song, filled with reflective introspection, set the tone for the upcoming album. On April 23, 2021, Surrounded by Time was released, with each track serving as a brushstroke of emotion, a testament to a lifetime immersed in music. The album spoke of wisdom and nostalgia, each song a poignant memory etched into the grooves of time. A significant event unfolded as time progressed to June 17th and 18th, 2022. Tom Jones, the iconic singer, graced the Principality Stadium in his hometown of Cardiff, sharing the stage with the acclaimed Stereophonics. The audience watched in awe as their cheers mingled with echoes of the past, creating a bittersweet symphony. The Saturday concert was broadcast live on BBC Two, a poignant reminder of the magic of live performances. In this moment, Tom Jones touched the hearts of many, tribute to Tom's late wife. Taking to the stage on The Voice UK on September 3, 2022. From his album Surrounded by Time, he performed the song I Won't Crumble With You If You Fall. This performance was like no other. It was saturated with deep melancholy. His voice trembling with emotion, he explained after the song the true meaning of the song. He shared the tough battle his wife fought with lung cancer and unfortunately lost. However, she wasn't alone. He was right by her side, caring and supporting her. Right before her passing, gathering all the strength in her, she told him he couldn't crumble with her and he shouldn't fall because he had done everything he could, asking him to carry on with his life happily. That moment of pain and profound love is wrapped up in every note and lyrics of the song. Sharing in his moment of pain, the song quickly rose to the top of the UK iTunes chart within a day and surfaced at number three on the UK official singles downloads chart on September 9, 2022, emphasizing the power of music to connect, heal, and share the deepest emotions. Unlike his career, his marriage, wasn't beautiful. It was filled with betrayal, heartaches, and eventually loss. 
Tom Jones married his high school sweetheart, Melinda Rose Linda Trenchard, on the 2nd of March, 1957. It was a hurried wedding owing to Linda's pregnancy, a show of their passions. Not long after tying the knot, their son Mark arrived and their young love began the journey, shouldering the responsibility of being parents. Tom Jones took his new role as a father quite seriously, taking up jobs in construction and even working at a glove factory. Through sweat and tears, he toiled to provide for his young family with a bleak future. His voice was the only thing that held the promise of a bright future, if any, at all. Before Linda died in 1976, her marriage to Jones was unhappy, and his unfaithfulness spoiled their marital vows. Her death was a huge blow to him. He lost more than just his woman. He lost a vital piece of his life to cancer, and the void of her absence could never be replaced. Unable to bear the weight of her loss, still living in the home they once shared, he made a heartbreaking choice. He sold their mansion in Los Angeles as a means to lessen the burden. Etched in his memory are memories they once shared. With only cherished photographs at hand, he relocated to a low-key apartment in London, where they met and their love blossomed. Jones's infidelities. To the dismay of his wife, while she was alive, Tom Joan was involved in so many affairs publicly disclosed, much to his wife's chagrin. Despite the pain, she kept her vows and remained loyal to her unfaithful husband. Admitting to a dark side, he was involved with almost 250 groupies within a year when his fame peaked. These perks that came with being famous left him empty and restless. He had several affairs even with notable figures such as the famous American singer Mary Wilson, presenter Charlotte Laws, and even Marjorie Wallace, a former Miss World. One of the most disturbing exposures came from actress Cassandra Peterson, popularly known as Elvira, Mistress of the Dark. Having lost her virginity to Tom Joan, she recalls the memory as painful and traumatic and even had to get stitches at the hospital, an adverse effect of their intimacy. During his tour in the U.S. in 1987, there was yet another affair with a model, Catherine Berkery, that resulted in pregnancy. His denial of the paternity turned into a legal battle, including DNA testing that confirmed him as the father in 1989. However, Tom Jones will have nothing to do with his son, Jonathan Berkery, choosing to remain distant as he has no interest in him. Share your thoughts on Tom Jones's life in the comment section below. If you like this video, you're gonna love this other one on your screen as well. As well. As well. As well.